With the new Pokemon Snap game being released in just a few days, we're going to go over what you need to know about this game before you pre-order your copy, including looking into the real-life Illumina phenomena that surrounds us in our world with our real-life Pokemon known as animals. Then I'll be joined by my buddy who's an expert photographer as he shares his top tips for making the most out of this game. So you ready? Join the safari and let's snap to it. Pokemon Snap takes us to the lentil region, which I find is quite amusing because lentils, you can eat them? The lentil region certainly looks diverse, given from the footage that we've seen in the trailers, whether that be under the water with Mantine or through the deserts with Mandibuzz. There is going to be a lot to explore. In fact, the main goal of the game is to complete your photo decks. And it's not just taking one photo of each Pokemon. Oh no, each photo is rated and scored in a star system, which we'll get to later. To help you complete the photo decks, there are a few new functions in the game, like the scanning function that helps either identify if it's a Pokemon or an object, but also can help you find new pathways. Because that's one of the endearing charms of the Pokemon Snap franchise, where you are in a bubble, or uh, I guess mobile unit, and you have to go on certain pathways, so you don't have the luxury of stopping to get that perfect shot. You are on the move, and you gotta be quick with those fingers to snap away and get the best picture possible, and be at the right place at the right time. So using this new scan feature to find new paths is going to be, well, interesting, because that's gonna help with your research level. For each time you take a path, it looks like you'll increase and possibly be able to find even more Pokemon. So it pays to do the same path multiple times to help complete your photo decks even quicker. In fact, it makes me think of playing the original Pokemon Snap on the N64 and how I did the beach pathway many times because I wanted to get the Pikachu on the surfboard. That was my main photo that I wanted to get because it was just so cute. And of course, I think Lapras was on there as well. Maybe we'll find a surfing Pikachu. Although I know there's an Alolan Raichu that's surfing the waves. That's going to be fun to photograph. Speaking of which, if you haven't already pre-ordered your game, you got to get on it. Go down, click on the link in the description down below to pre-order your copy and also help support Maui and me at no additional cost to you. Thanks guys! So in the original Pokemon Snap game, I remember <laughs> throwing apples at Pokemon, which seemed rather bizarre, but hey ho, I guess, I guess Pokemon like apples too. I mean, I don't know why it wasn't a berry, you know, because they make such a fuss about the berries. I guess it maybe was before the berry time in the original games, I guess. But anyways, in the new Pokemon Snap, it is called Fluff Fruit, but it's pretty much an apple, but they call it Fluff Fruit. Potato, potato. <laughs> Anyways, just like in the original game, it looks like you can throw this fluff fruit to get the attention of Pokemon. Or maybe they might just ignore it because they are not a fan of fluff fruit. Either way, it's an opportunity to either bring about some interesting behaviors that you can document on camera, and it's always worth a shot to try your hand at throwing fluff fruit, I guess. But it looks to me that the biggest difference in the new Pokemon Snap game is the Lumina phenomenon, in which, as a photographer, you have access to Illumina orbs that you can then toss to the Pokemon while you're en route to give them a glowing effect. In fact, in one of the trailers, it says that this means they are overflowing with life energy. Hmm, which got me thinking. Could the Lumina phenomena be in our real world with our real life Pokemon known as animals? There's two things that come to mind. Biofluorescence and bioluminescence. The difference between these two fun words to say is in fact where the light comes from. Where is it produced? Let's first look at bioluminescence because it starts from within. Because the light is produced by the energy that's being released from chemical reactions within the organism. According to National Geographic, 
an impressive 76% of ocean animals are bioluminescent. Probably one of the better known bioluminescent creatures of the deep is the anglerfish. You know the ones where the females have a lure of sorts dangling over their head that glows to attract prey. In fact, that's one of the functions of bioluminescence, to lure or even detect prey. Other species may use bioluminescence for camouflage, to warn predators, or to communicate with other individuals of their same species. Now let's take a look at biofluorescence. The source of the light from biofluorescent animals doesn't come from within, rather externally. Organisms that are biofluorescent have special proteins that are built into their skin or their fur or other tissues that absorb energy from the sunlight, take it, and then re-emit it as a different color. Biofluorescence has been observed in fish, reptiles, amphibians, birds, and even mammals. I can't wait to see how they bring in the Lumina phenomena into the new Pokemon Snap game. And can't wait to fill up my photo decks. But with that in mind, I think I'm gonna need some help in getting some top tips from my buddy Ken, who is an expert photographer from the channel aptly named Ken Kusumoto. All right, Ken, before we get down to business, I need to know who is your favorite Pokemon? Shelby, how's it going? Hi, everyone. I will have to say my favorite Pokemon will be Mew because I'm old school and I love Mew. Small, cute, but yet powerful. And that is a Pokemon for me. But also, I gotta show you this. Hang on. Take a look at this view. All right, all right. I'll, I'll give you that. Mew is pretty cool and frankly adorable. I actually have Mew walking around with me as a buddy on Pokemon Go at the moment. So fair play, fair play. So Ken, we see in the games that for a photo decks, we can have a rating of one to four stars. What do you suggest we do to get that top rating, that four star photo? So as far as how well you score on Pokemon Snap will be determining on different factors, like how the Pokemon is facing you. Is it facing you? Is it facing away from you? If they're doing a rare pose, for example, if they're doing a rare behavior, then you can snap that photo, as well as your composition. Composition is basically where you put that Pokemon in your frame. If it's in the middle, the frame is perfect. If it's a little off or the head's cut off a little bit on the frame, then it's not gonna be such a great photo. Having said that, you can play around with it. Take your shots, take as many shots as you can, and you're bound to get a pretty good shot. Sounds like I'm gonna have to do these pathways quite a few times to get that perfect shot. But assuming I did get the perfect shot, Ken, I got a high scoring photo, four stars. Would it be worth editing it? All right, so first off, if you do get a four star on your photo, that is awesome. And if you want to edit it, you can, but you don't have to. You got a four star. There's a four star for a reason. You got all the criteria that the game required you to have in the photo to get that four star. But if you want to edit it, that's no problem. It's totally subjective. If you want to actually change the brightness of your photo, you want to blur it, you want to sharpen it, you want to change the focal point within the photo, you want to maybe add a filter to it. These are all things that the new Pokemon Snap will have for you. Whew, so there's a lot of different options that we can do with our photos. That's really cool. Now in the real world, photos can be shared on Instagram. You have a pretty amazing Instagram yourself, which by the way, I'll put a link to in the description down below. And it turns out in Pokemon Snap, you too can share your photos on Nintendo Switch Online. How can you make your photos even more popular though on an online platform? So when it comes to sharing your content on Instagram or the Nintendo ecosystem, this is something that we all wanna to do to get a little bit more votes on our photos. So what you want to do is maybe utilize a little bit of the other features like captions, or stickers. These will make your photos pop a little bit more, give it a little bit more attention from the people and maybe get you the extra vote. Thanks for having me, Shelby. I gotta go and I'm gonna start taking some photos actually. So I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Actually, I gotta go this way. It's been so fun going over the tips of what to expect, including looking more into the Lumina phenomenon that we're gonna see in the games with glowing Pokemon. It's gonna be so cool. And of course, thanks to my buddy Ken from Ken Kusumoto for joining us and giving us your top tips, buddy. I can't wait to challenge you to a good player versus player game on Pokemon Go. 
I might be trading up my Mew just to battle you with it. <laughs> but if you guys play Pokemon Go as well, and you want to learn more about the newly released Pokemon Skrelp and Clauncher in their real life animal equivalent, head on to the video over here in which you can see one of my live streams in which I talk about these amazing Pokemon, but they're equally impressive real life counterparts. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in that video.